Hey, everybody, thanks for watching uh, here on YouTube. Uh, if you want to help make the show, uh, you want to help us out, uh, go down and hit subscribe. It really does a lot. Or you can always check us out at patreon.com slash commandersbrew if you want to help directly. It's a real big help. And don't forget to check out Battle of the Brews right here on YouTube and tell your buds. Uh, but without further ado, we're going to get to today's huge deck tech. It's a brand new card from a brand new set. Uh, it is Rien. Angel of Rebirth. Uh, I believe Rien is the buy a box promo uh, from the current set M20. And she is a bit of a house, a bit of an engine, and a really cool commander in these colors that we like, the likes of which we have not seen, essentially. Uh, what she does is she comes down, uh, she gives them all their multicolored creatures uh, plus one plus zero. Oh, and then when another multicolored creature dies, we're going to be able to return it to our hand at the beginning of the next end step. So a lot of value here in sacrificing creatures, uh, uh, sacrificing other creatures, uh, letting our creatures die and all that sort of stuff and getting that value engine rolling. Uh, so just to start us right off, Sean, what do you think? What do you think we get to the uh, neat moves? Working on a neat move. So we are talking value, right? Obviously, we want to take advantage of things dying and coming back to our hand. The best way to do that is to sacrifice creatures. Uh, and the ones that can sacrifice for value include Kasali Pride Mage. We can pay one, destroy an enchantment or an artifact, and cast this creature again and just loop that as long as we have multiples of three mana on the battlefield. That's possible. Dauntless Escort, in a similar manner, gives our whole team indestructible. Uh, the Dauntless Escort can sacrifice itself again, coming back to our hand. We got And we got Safi Eric's Daughter, which is like, if you've played against Safi Eric's Daughter, you know that there are some brutal moves you can do, like Safi Eric's Daughter plus Sun Titan. Like, you can do some like brutal stuff to just bring things back as uh, things are put into your graveyard. So instead of going to your hand, Safi can like make it go right back into play. Safi's all, Safi herself will also go back to your hand if Brienne is in play. Yeah, and it's important to note that uh, uh, not Brienne, although Brienne of Tarth. Oh, did I say would Brienne? Be a, would be a cool magic card. Uh, Brienne of Rebirth. Uh, <laughs> she doesn't do like you don't get the cards right back to your hand right away, right? Like you do have to wait till the next end step. That's so, true. So, so that's but that's just where the value for, for Safi comes in is that you can have something die and then have it come back to the battlefield right away. So you can like it's battlefield. Uh, and you get it right away. So that's that's pretty nice to be able to like speed that interaction up. Uh, those creatures all sacrifice themselves, uh, but we've also got a couple of, of uh, neat creatures that uh, sacrifice other things. So uh, Brian Stoutarm and uh, Thromok the Insatiable are two really good ones. So Brian gets to do it uh, with by tapping and paying red, and it's got the lifelink, and it kind of flings these big creatures. And Thromok can become that big creature for you, and then also bounce back. But it's also like a sack outlet because it has Devour X, uh, where X is the number of creatures you control that you devoured this way. So like, if you devour any whatever the number is, you just it's squared. That's how many uh, plus one plus one counters Thromok gets. So Thromok gets real big, uh, real quickly, especially since there's also um, some creatures with uh, death triggers, uh, specifically that make us some tokens like these ones. Yeah, so we got Voice of Resurgence in here. Uh, this you'll recall this is the only good card from Dragon's Maze. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, so we're getting tokens, and these tokens are green and white. These are multicolored tokens that do get pumped by Rian. I don't know how important that is. Once you've then once they're like 11 11s, like yeah. it is making them 12 11 that great. Doesn't matter though. That stuff we we tokens are great for as sack fodder. Uh we've got Conclave Cavalier. Uh their death trigger gives us two multicolored tokens to play around with. Uh and uh yeah, so that that's just those are just great ways to make multicolor tokens uh, that we are happy to sacrifice uh, to other things. Yeah, these are the cards that you. These are the creatures that like you. These are the sack fodder, right? Because because they are all then going to make more sack fodder for us. So so Conclave Cavalier and and uh, Voice of Resurgence are, work especially well for that for that purpose. They can be sacrificed yeah. to uh, to throw Mock and Bryon. Um, uh, but uh, there's also cards in here where we're just getting. You know, we're going to be having these cards come back to our hands at the end step, right? We've sacrificed these creatures or whatever. So you do have to pay the cost to recast them. That is something that is most likely going to have to happen. So 
getting some additional value on the cast uh, is something that we want. And one of the best ways to do that is, is with Cascade. So Enlisted Worm at six mana for a five five and Bloodbraid Elf, the classic uh, for the four mana three two with haste. These are two Cascaders that are gonna be able to come down, uh, uh, Cascade into something, get sacrificed for value, come back to our hand at the end step and then next turn we'll just continue that. Again, getting the Cascade value and they're there for us either to like attack with or sacrifice if we need them. Cascade works really well in that way because yeah, we we they're back to your hand. And you gotta cast it again. Yeah, 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 great. Like like I'm happy to recascade every turn. Yeah. Uh, we are also running like ways to kind of get more tokens. Like Rian giving tokens plus one plus zero, and that's not what she does. But if we can create enough multicolor tokens giving them all plus one plus oh we can get a pretty threatening pretty wide scary board uh dragon brood mother is a huge piece of that puzzle uh spoiler alert it is one of the more expensive cards in the deck but uh, i think you get what you pay for here it's it's obviously market adjusted fairly because mm -hmm. getting a four four flyer is great and then each upkeep well i always assume most commander games are four players so we're getting three tokens with devour two every turn that's six one they're, they're all two one flyers because of Rianne. But they all have devour two, so like when it gets back to our turn, we can make the last one devour a couple of the earlier ones. Or heck, a couple more. That's the beauty. The second la like the one on the turn before us. So the player to our right gets an upkeep. And we get to make another dragon and decide. It's like, oh, I see someone who has no flying defense right now. What's your life total? Oh, it's in the twenties. Uh, yeah, I got enough tokens. I can sack enough to this one last dragon and make that big enough to just kill you now if you don't have an answer. That's an option with this card. Uh, nonetheless, it's very strong. Making multicolor tokens. Another great card to make multicolor tokens is Xenagos the Reveler, the Planeswalker. That's Xenagos' zero ability. But, like, the plus ability also so relevant in this yep. deck because having all these creatures back to your hand, we want to spend... 35 mana every turn <laughs> yeah, exactly. a, so like this deck cannot get enough mana so uh the plus one ability is not like it's, it's two highly relevant abilities the minus six the ultimate we usually can discount those in commander because i mean most of the time the table won't let you get to them uh in this case though it is has a use like we, in seven cards we're gonna find a lot of creatures and lands so yep. like would I still, I still probably want to use spam my plus one though. I, d yeah. I can't imagine where I would, would rather do that. Yeah. Uh, and then Conclave Clavelier, as mentioned before, that's another great way to get multicolor tokens. And although these tokens are multicolor, Hero of Precinct 1, the whole deck is multicolor. So we're going to be casting multicolor spells. We're going to be getting a lot of 1 1 white human creatures. Yeah, and those tokens, whether they be multicolored or not, still f serve a really great purpose in our deck as sack fodder for our uh, devour creatures or anything else that, that wants to sacrifice creatures because we have a lot of, uh, of that kind of stuff in the deck. So you're going to be happy with just, to with just random tokens on the board, even if they are just 1-1 one, one white uh, human creature tokens. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, we talked about it a little bit about it with the cascade, but we're going to get these creatures back to our hand. And sometimes, you know, you want to cast two of them out at the same time, but like they both cost six mana or something. That's a lot. So it's going to be very important for us to a ramp, obviously in commander, but also just to cheat that mana cost, right? Just, just let's just do something where we can just put this onto the board. So we've got a couple of ways to mitigate that mana cost. Uh, uh, number one is Elvish Piper. The, it's a, uh, the you pay a green and tapper to just put a creature onto the battlefield so you can do this at instant speed uh as well as you're not paying the full mana cost obviously and it actually gets around like counters and stuff which is like just an added bonus but you're obviously not paying five or six mana for whatever it is um uh similar cards in dragon arch and um uh quicksilver amulet uh those are both cards that allow us to pay a certain cost tap tap the artifact that they are and put uh, these things onto the battlefield. So Dragon Arch allows you to do it to a multicolored creature, and then just Quicksilver Amulet lets you do it to any creature. Uh, and then there's also Urza's Filter, which is a, a four mana artifact that says multicolored spells cost up to two less to play. So that's just going to be like an automatic soul ring on all your multicolored creatures, uh, which is so sweet. It's really nice. Like we've got the mana in here to be able to be using them for the for the for the multicolored costs, and then just like mitigating it and making it only cost the colored mana is great. 
And I just want to point out, like, if we're talking about our Cascade creatures, the game still recognizes their casting cost as the full amount. So if you are able to play a Bloodbraid Elf for just green-red, you still get to hit three drops with your Cascade trigger. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Of course, uh, speaking of Cascade, Dragon Arch, Quicksilver Amulet, and Elvish Piper, you will not get to Cascade if you use that's right. those abilities. You're not casting the spells casting with those. Spell. Right, 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 right. But still very, very good to, to be able to you know lessen the mana cost, uh, uh, change the mana cost, essentially, when you're talking about, like, paying two colorless or four colorless. Like, now you don't have to worry as much about the multicolored cost of it. And to be able to do it at instant speed, these are great cards. Yeah. Uh, Andy, what a cool deck. Uh, Rien seems kind of busted. I noticed there's not really a price for her right now. Yeah, like, it's, I tough, think it's we... tough to find a price for her, yeah. So, I mean, I think she might be expensive out of the gate, but uh, I would. I, this is, seems like a really fun deck. I think uh, it's exciting to me. Did you have any surprises and discoveries while putting it together? Did have a bit of a discovery. Uh, it's a green and white enchantment from let's see, Judgment. It's called uh, uh, it's called Hunting Grounds, and it's it has threshold and says as long as well it, as long as you have threshold, uh, whenever an opponent plays a spell, you may put a creature card from your hand into play. So another way to get around the mana cost of having a bunch of creatures that that you sacrifice in your hand. But this this way, not only being able to do this at like not on your turn, not having to worry about it being your turn, but when your opponents just play spells, you just get to drop a creature down. And then if you want to sacrifice it immediately and have it come back at end of turn, and now the next time a person plays it, uh, you know, in the next turn when someone plays a spell, this is not going to stop your, 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 your opponents from playing spells. They have to play magic, right? So, I mean, maybe the first spell will be to destroy an enchantment, sure. But they're going to have to do something about it. Now, the threshold part is the hardest part to make happen. Rian is obviously going to keep your creatures out of the graveyard. Uh, but that being said, like Rian's not going to be on the battlefield all the time. There will be stuff in your in your graveyard, and it just uh, just seven or more cards. I mean, that's just not that hard to have happen in in uh, in EDH. So I think why is this can run card this... not more expensive? I think just because it's only in green white. I think that's why. Like it has to be a green white deck. There are similar cards in just mono green that like are of similar price, I guess. So like, I guess hunting grounds maybe isn't as sought after. I don't know. Seems very good. I know it seems really good. You gotta hit that threshold, but like, if you do, but you gotta keep the card draw coming. That's another thing, right? Like hunting grounds is only so good because like, oh, I paid played three spells. Well, I only had two creatures in my hand, so I dropped them for free. Yeah, that's awesome. But now what's going on, right? Now it's not doing anything. Right. That's probably another reason why. So yeah. usually you have to keep drawing cards, but in our case, Rien gets them back for us. It's great. Very nice. Um, let's do the budget report. We will take all of the cards and see how many colors of bills you need to use to buy them. And if it's more than one, we're good. We're good. So this deck came in at around $160. Um, you can go to various sources and find different prices, but that's around where we're going to we're going to land for this, which, and honestly, for the card, the card quality level that you have in here, it's not that bad. Um, it, there are some ways to mitigate that price, though, uh, starting with the number one most expensive card, which, again, it depends on where you look. Like, like where we had it, which is a, a MPG Goldfish Birthing Pod, uh, it's looked to be the most expensive card. It's around like $12, $13. Amazing card, obviously. Great value. Great sack uh, 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 outlet. Um yeah, Phyrexian mana unlikely to be to be printed again. So you know, paying twelve or thirteen dollars for it is just might it just might be what you have to do to get this card these days. So there's that. Um, we also have Dragon Broodmother though, which the pre-release uh, like foil is around twelve or thirteen dollars, but the regular is like seventeen and even up to like twenty dollars. So this is probably actually the most expensive card in the deck, but anyways, re uh, re regardless, like it's it's a great card. This does everything you want to do in the deck. Uh, it's really really good. And finally, there's Voice of Resurgence, which is around seven seven fifty, uh, which is like it's replaceable. A lot of these cards aren't as re super replaceable in this in this deck because multicolored uh, cares about like dying, cares about some tokens in some places. Like these cards aren't. There's not a lot of cards that do all that stuff. So. To find them is nice, uh, so they're not super replaceable. So that's why I'd say, like, if you're going to cut costs here, 
The birthing pod and the voiceover surgeons are the most easily replaceable. Dragon Brood Mother is a very unique card, and if if any if you're gonna splurge for any of the cards in this deck, I'd say that should be the one. Nice. Uh, Andy, what's your favorite card in the deck? My favorite card is easy. Tome of the Guild Pact, five mana for the artifact that says, whenever you cast a multicolored spell, draw a card. No problem. I'd yeah. love to. And it also you can also tap it for mana of any color. It's great. It does yeah. everything. Ramps you, draws your cards, cares about multicolored, love it. Yeah, what and once you? you consider yeah, once you consider we're dropping cards from our hands for free or cheaper, that's amazing. You're casting uh, stuff, right? You're casting those cards again, so you're gonna draw a lot off of the tome. Yeah. Uh, I am looking at Evolutionary Leap. This is sort of a cousin of Birthing Pod. Uh, I think sacking all of our tokens to turn them into legitimate creatures yep. is amazing. Uh, and we're going to just have a full hand of cards to decide what to cast and what to like keep that engine rolling. Yeah, Rianne's cool. Rianne is very cool, very unique. Love the ability. Love the color combo. Like it's, It seems like a very different Naya deck to me, right? Like... Yeah, we've got some token theme, and yeah, we've got some big creatures, like which is generally what Naya tends to do in Commander. But yeah. this other angle of like the reanimation, uh, as you said on the audio show, reanimation, <laughs> right? Like that that angle it, in these colors, we just don't see it that often, and it's it's great. I love it. Cool. Very very cool. Yeah. So that's it. Thanks for watching this week. Um, remember to check out Battle of the Brews right here on YouTube. Um, check out all the other stuff we got going on. Uh, thanks for listening, and uh, we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye. Big thanks to all our patrons who make these episodes possible. Yeah, and if you want to check out more comedy videos, check out our Brews News playlist. Make sure you follow us on Twitch TV to see when we play live. If you want to chat with us, head over to Twitter. We're at Commander's Brew. And please hit subscribe to Ding the Bell and find out when we got new stuff coming out. See you next time. Bye.